Salute, bello mio. Come stai? You back to see me already? Desolato, mia cara. But I am not here to play. I must speak with Antonio. It's urgent. Antonio! Ezio's here! Ezio, is everything all right? Carlo Grimaldi and the Barbarigo are in league with the one they call the Spaniard. They're going to murder the Doge and replace him with one of their own. They will have all of Venezia, their entire fleet, in their grasp. And they call me a criminal. Then you'll help me. You have me on your side, brother. And the support of all my men. And women. Grazie, amici. But, Ezio, I must warn you. It's not going to be so easy this time. Palazzo Ducale is the most heavily guarded building in Venezia. Nothing is impenetrable. <laughs> this is why we like you, Ezio. Come, let's go take a look. We'll come up with a plan. We need to scout the palazzo carefully. See it from every angle. We just might find a way in. I know of a tall campanile behind the palazzo. Or we might find a way to climb the back of the basilica. Do you have any ideas? I assume the front door is out. <laughs> Va bene. We'll try the front door as well, Saputello. So, what do you think? We're not getting in this way. They'll have time to murder the Dodge before we're able to get through all these guards. <clears throat> Look at that. Archers everywhere. And the walls are impossible to climb on this side. Qui. Let's do it. Bene. We're in luck. Looks like there's a perfect path up the scaffolding to the roof of the basilica. Shall we? Ezio, look! Isn't that him? Grimaldi! Don't you understand what I'm offering you, signore? Listen to me, please. Or this will be your last chance. How dare you! I'm sorry. Mi dispiace. I meant nothing by it. I'm only looking out for your safety. We're running out of time. There's no way through this fence, and there are guards everywhere. Diavolo! All right, this way. It's impossible. There's no way in or out for me. Only birds. Yes. Birds. Where are you going now? To see my friend Leonardo. I need your help, Leonardo. Does it work? What? What are you asking? Does it work, Leonardo? Can it really fly? I don't know. It's only a prototype. An idea. It's not ready yet. Have you tried it? No, it's too dangerous. To test it, you'd have to leap off a tower. Who would be mad enough to do a thing like that? Leonardo, I think you just found your madman. So, how does she work? Have you ever watched the bird in flight? It's not about being lighter than air. It's about grace and balance. You must use your body's own weight to control your elevation and direction. Good luck, Ezio. You flew! See, si, but not very far. Well, what were you expecting? The machine wasn't designed for distance. All right, look, let me go over my plans here. Maybe I can find some way to extend the duration of the flight. Ezio, my men tell me Carlo has the poison. We must hurry. Antonio, this is Leonardo, the master inventor who built this... this petro de merda. Hey, it's not the machine's fault. It's mine. I 
checked and rechecked my blueprints. It's just impossible. I don't know how to extend the flight. Ah, que idea del cazzo! Eureka! Of course! <laughs> Genio! What is he doing now? It rises. It needs fire. Heated air under its wings will lift the machine. Leonardo, what good is one fire going to do? Not one fire, Ezio. A dozen, built all across the city. Enough to carry you from here all the way to the Palazzo Ducale. How? Ah, oh, capisco. My men could do that, but you are forgetting about the guards. Don't worry. I will take care of them. I'll give the order to have my men move in behind you, and hold the locations. They'll light them all up the second the sun goes down over San Marco. Carlo Grimaldi. Emerging from his palace in Monaco with a craving for political power, Carlo quickly became a key guest at the tables of Venetian nobility. While his reputation for discretion earned him entrance into the back rooms. Here's how the old bastard ended up in the Council of Ten. While visiting the head of the council, Ignacio Contarini, Carlo ran into Ignacio's daughter. Desperate for help and aware of Carlo's trustworthy reputation, she confided in him. Her father had arranged her marriage, but she wanted to run away with the son of one of the servants. They'd been in love since they were children, and they planned to start a new life in Milan where they could be free of her father. Carlo suggested immediate action, an escape by ship that night. The two lovers followed his instructions, and as they climbed the gangplank, they were free. That is, until Ignazio appeared on deck. Carlo was rewarded for his loyalty to the Contarini family. While true love, well, see for yourself. It's time. You did it. It's beautiful. See. Si. Now let's hope your idea works, because we're nearly out of time. Listen close, Ezio. You're going to want to fly from fire to fire. The heat of each one you pass over should lift you back up in the air again. Bene. Careful, though. There's archers out on the roofs tonight. Avoid those arrows, or it will be a short trip. I wish there was some way I could use my sword while flying these things. <laughs> well, you do have your feet free. If you get close enough without taking an arrow in the head, maybe you could kick them off the building. Nice. It's now or never, amico mio. Ma cos'è? Shoot! Shoot the flying demon! just kids with firecrackers. Come, it's your move. Stop! Signore, don't drink that! You are too late. The Doge is dead. What? Carlo? Apologies, Signore. But you should have listened to me when you had the chance. Seems you have failed, assassin. Forgive me, Signore. I tried. Why? What was it all for? 
Assassino! Assassino! He's killed the Doge! The Doge is dead! He takes one assassin to kill another, it seems. We kill thinking it's best for us. Do we not, Messer Ezio? I do this not for myself. Compio questo sacrificio per il bene superiore. Requiescat in pace. You... you killed me? You killed me? You're alive! I is it true? They say you killed the Doge. I was trying to save him, Leonardo. But the truth matters little. I failed. And now I'm the most wanted man in Venezia. Well, perhaps you are in luck. It's Carnevale in Venezia. This is the time when everybody goes without a face. That's why I'm here. Do you have a mask I can wear? Of course, of course. Somewhere in here. Grazie, amico mio. I have something for you. Oh, War of the Codex. Aha. Uh -huh. This one's quite complex. Hmm. It's a new design, my friend. A mechanism for your wrist, but not a blade. In fact, it seems to be a kind of arma da fuoco, but as small as a hummingbird. Is that possible? I have no idea. Let's build it and find out. You've done me good, brother. Ma certo. But I'm sure your return was not just to play with new toys. Is it about this terrible new dodge they've installed? Marco Barbarico. Then you'll want to speak with your friend Antonio. I've seen him quite a bit lately at... a uh, uh, mutual friends. I'd look for him there, in the Dorsoduro district. To the south. Ask for Sister Teodora. Sister? Well, um... <clears throat> in a way. Yes. Sister, and Ezio, you can't be carrying weapons out there today. Grazie, Leonardo. Now, how about that mask? <laughs> Antonio, we need to talk. Ezio! Ezio Auditore! Teodora, meet the most uh, <coughs> talented man in all of Venezia. Madonna. Ah, Sister Teodora. I never imagined you as a religious type. <laughs> it depends how you understand religion, my son. It's not just men's souls that call for soothing. Come, join us, Ezio. 
Have a drink. Meet the ladies. I trust you know why I'm here. I imagine to rid Venice of Marco Barbarico. But really, Ezio, we did this once already. And this new Templar Doge is a bigger culo than the last. Never mind that he never leaves the palazzo. Yes, except for tonight. Marco wouldn't dare miss Carnevale. How do you know this? In fact, he's throwing the biggest party of them all. But getting in won't be so simple. You'll need a golden mask for entry. And before you think about forging one, keep in mind, each mask is numbered. Fortunately for you, I have an idea. Let's see if we can't win you a mask. Signore, signore, come on, come all. The games of Carnevale are about to begin. Do you have the coraggio to compete for as grand a prize as this? This year, like every year, the Golden Mask will provide entry for one, a uno solo, to our most beloved Doge's personal ball. Who would not desire such an exceptional reward? Come, compete! Whoever proves themselves champion in each of four games today shall be the Doge's personal guest tonight. Who You'd best get to it, Ezio. Signori, signori, welcome. Gentlemen, whether you win or lose, this will certainly be your favorite game of the day. Ladies, here's how the game is played. All the ladies in the district have ribbons. Your job is to obtain them. Whoever has the most before my hourglass runs out is one step closer to winning the golden mask. You're all looking lovely this afternoon. Could I trouble you for a ribbon? We have a winner! You have more ribbons than any man here. You've proved yourself a favorite of the ladies and are now one step closer to the greatest prize of all time. Benvenuti! Are you ready to test yourselves with a game of speed and endurance? Many challenges lie in your path. The game is simple, but finishing it, near impossible. Start when you're ready. The first contestant to beat the course record is one step closer to the golden mass. and strongest in Venezia. You are now one step closer to the grand prize. Benvenute lottatori. The game is simple. There's only one rule, no weapons. Fight until you are the last man left standing. Will it be you or two? Mm. Who will win the golden mask?
like this one thinks himself some kind of campeon. Go on, Dante. Show him how sadly mistaken he is. Is there nobody else to challenge our man in the ring? Do we have a winner? Ah, we have combatants! So that's how it's going to be, eh? Conclusion. Come see our winner claim his golden mask. Our winner has proven himself the fleetest of foot, the strongest of champions, the wisest strategist, and clearly a favorite of the ladies. With four games won, Lealmente, the winner of the golden mask is... <coughs> the winner of the golden mask is Dante Moro. Congratulations. We'll see you this evening. Ezio, I was hoping to see you tonight. I don't have much time. The Doge's party starts very soon. Nevertheless, I have news. I hear Cristina Vespucci is in Venezia for Carnevale. Weren't the two of you close? Once. Perhaps it would have been better not to tell you. She's with her husband. She may not be too happy to see you. No. It's wonderful. It's Carnevale. With this mask, she need not even know it's me. I know just the way to draw her attention. Grazie, amico. So romantic. It's you. What the hell are you doing here? How dare you? Christina, it's all right. All right? I haven't seen you in eight years. See. Si. I was afraid you wouldn't come if I just asked. You're right. I wouldn't have. Ezio, the last time I saw you, you kissed me in an alley and then left me behind to be married. It was the right thing to do. He loved you. Who cares what he wanted? I love you. You had your second chance. Please, Ezio, don't ever find me again. I'm sorry, Ezio. We could not have known Silvio would cheat as he did. <laughs> you should have. Sister, you told us to let you know if we saw that rotting culo who stole the golden mask. He's on his way to the Doge's party. I will go. I can catch him before he arrives and take back the mask. How? By killing the poor stronzo? Yes. You know what's at stake. No. If you kill him, they'll cancel the party. And Marco will retreat back into his palazzo. We'll have wasted our time again. Steal the mask instead. Quietly. My girls can help. 
They're already on their way to the party, all along the route. They can help you distract him while you acquire the mask. Va bene. I can do that. Marco Barbarigo. Although his brother Agostino was destined for greatness, Marco left his mark on Venetian history as well. A tyrant since he was barely old enough to walk, whatever Marco wanted, he got. There are records here for jewels, entire fleets of ships, all paid for by his family and all ordered directly from him. And then there's his personal life. Apparently, Marco's wife, Carlotta, used to be married to his bodyguard, Dante Moro. Dante was captain of the city guard, an heir to one of the most prestigious families in Venezia. Marco was supposedly his close friend, right? But get this, Marco decides he wants Carlotta. In the Catholic religion, marriages till death do us part, and Marco's a good Catholic. So, he hires a hit on Dante. Dante gets stabbed three times in the body, and once in the head. But he doesn't die. He recovers with severe brain damage. Dante becomes like a child. So, what does Marco do? Well, he hires Dante as his personal bodyguard, and he gets him to sign a confession annulling the marriage. Marco takes Carlotta and keeps Dante as his personal slave. What a lovely fella. No, you need. Buonasera, signore. You made it. Marco is on a boat, just offshore. He's set to make a speech in a few minutes. Use my girls until then. Move with them to stay out of sight. Signore e signori, I present to you the beloved Doge of Venezia. Benvenuti! Welcome, my friends, to the grandest social event of the season. At peace or at war, in times of prosperity or paucity, Venezia will always have Carnival. Tonight, we celebrate what makes us great. How bright our lights shine over the world. That's it. Your pistola, the one you stopped the murder with. It's as loud as those explosions. Time it right, and you'll walk out of here unnoticed. I like the way you think, sister. I'll be waiting for you back at the brothel, my son. Well, my friends, I'm here to tell you, I can see down that road. I know where we're going. It's a beautiful place. And we're going there together! No. It's too soon. I'm not ready. We rarely are. Que la morte non sia crudele. Requiescat in pace. Beautifully done! Che spettacolo! A true hero! You must be exhausted. Come, relax. Ah, the savior of Venezia. What can I say? Perhaps it was wrong of me to doubt so readily. Now, we'll see where all the pieces fall. Enough of that now. You've worked hard, my son. I feel your tired body in need of comfort and succor. But I have such aches and pains, sister. I may need a great deal of comfort and succor. Oh, that can be arranged. Girls! <laughs> Come, Ezio. I'd like to introduce you to an uh, associate. This is Agostino Barbarico. Soon to be Doge of Venezia, thanks to you. 
È un onore fare la vostra conoscenza, illustrissimo. I'm sorry for the loss of your brother. He had it coming. He was bought and paid for by the Borgia. A mistake I have no intention of making. Come, Ezio. We have much to discuss. We've located Silvio Babarigo for you. He's fled into l'arsenale. <laughs> fled? You mean occupied and joined by 200 mercenari, no less. You're doge now. Can't you command them to stand down? The committee of 41 has yet to confirm my ascension. And this little stunt of Silvio's has only made things worse. He has an entire army at his command. Then help me to raise my own. I figured you'd say as much. Bartolomeo Dalviano is the man you seek. He and his men have little love for Silvio. He resides within the military district, southwest of L'Arsenale. Va bene. I'll go and see him. In this episode, Ezio and Antonio must find a way into the palace to prevent the assassination of the Doge. As they scout out the palace they just can't seem to find a way in. As Ezio watches a bird fly over the palace he remembers the flying machine that once hung from the rafters in Da Vinci's studio. Ezio goes to see him to inquire whether the machine works or not, but to find out if it works, Ezio has to jump off a tall building with it. A great aspect of this episode is that they show a different side of Da Vinci that most people don't know about. People think of Da Vinci as an artist, the man that painted the Mona Lisa, but he was more of an engineer and had all kinds of designs for all kinds of contraptions. Among them was a flying machine. In the game he figures out how to make the flying machine not just glide, but fly. Using the rising hot air from many fires lit along the way to the palace, Ezio flies from the Thieves' Guild all the way to the roof of the palace. Unfortunately, he fails to get there in time and the Doge is poisoned. But Carlo, the Templar who poisoned the Doge, is still there and Ezio catches and assassinates him. The Templars rig the story of what happened, and everyone believes Ezio was the one responsible for killing the Doge, so he lays low for a while. Then during the event known as Carnival, where everyone covers their face with a mask, Ezio is safe to move about the city unrecognized. He must assassinate the Templar's new doge, but to do so he needs to get close. There is a competition where the winner receives a golden mask that acts as a ticket to a party hosted by the doge. Although Ezio wins all the events, the Templars cheat and make one of their own the winner. Ezio steals the golden mask and gets into the party anyway. As fireworks are going off overhead, Ezio positions himself and using the wrist cannon Da Vinci built using a codex page, he assassinates the doge masking the sound of the cannon with the fireworks. Tune in to the next episode of Assassin's Creed to find out what happens next. Editing video games into a TV series format is a lot harder than it seems. Finding the perfect start and end of each episode, and then playing the game in a way that matches the narrative of the story without the HUD. Then trying to edit around the in-game pop-ups as much as possible and placing the music in the right place to fit the mood and emotion of the scene. It definitely takes time and focus, but I enjoy the challenge, and I feel it's worth it to tell such an amazing story. I would greatly appreciate if you could share the channel and videos with people you think may enjoy them, and leave a comment. Comments help me out more than anything. Thank you for watching, and remember, nothing is true. Everything is permitted.